So uh, why we did it, this is our new gauge. I've had a lot of issues with gauges, I think we all have as far as accuracy and durability. We didn't set out to make a gauge originally, but here we are, mainly just because uh, we couldn't find what we liked. And uh, with this one, it does have the chuck included here. We went with a screw-on chuck. Some say, why not a push-on? We just found that the screw-on takes very slightly longer and uh, this is robust, it just lasts forever. It's not gonna let you down or leak or get fussy, it just works. And then as well, this has a connect. I'd call it kind of a semi-quick disconnect. Uh, again, it threads on. Uh, the reason we didn't go with your typical quick connect is they're, they're huge. Um, and this is small, it's robust. And the other thing you get out of it, even under pressure, it swivels very nicely, you can see here. So once you screw this on, you can swivel this around to look at it, you know, whatever suits you. And of course, we, we do this hose here. And by the way, this is, uh, you can trim it, you can make it, you know, shorter, you get more hose, you can make it longer, whatever you like. Now to talk about the gauge. So the primary job of any gauge is accuracy. And a lot of the gauges we found were radically off. And you have to keep in mind as well, a lot of these gauges were made for typical road tire pressures, 30, 35, 40 PSI. They uh, need to be accurate in those ranges, so they'll set the pressure or the accuracy at 30, 35 PSI, and really not care what it reads at 10 PSI because people aren't, you're not setting at 10 PSI typically. Well, in the off-road world, we are. So we care about 5 PSI, 10 PSI, and the accuracy at those points. So instead of going to a typical tire gauge manufacturer, we went with a company that produces industrial equipment. So for them, the concept of accuracy is first and foremost. We actually have it adjusted and most accurate at the range that is most important. That's around 10 to 15 PSI versus, you know, 30. If you're off a couple PSI at 30, no big deal. If you're off a couple PSI at 10, bigger deal. And the range is also, it only goes to 40. Um, that allows uh, for more accuracy, again. So you can read it, the needle, you know, doesn't cover up three PSI on scale. So 40 PSI is, you know, typically you're not gonna go over that for most SUVs. What we have here, you're probably wondering what this is. This isn't for deflation. This is for accuracy. And so when we're talking about accuracy, we went from mini gauges, we're looking at plus or minus 1.5 PSI or three total at 15 PSI, which is huge. And by the way, that's one of the better gauges we found. Some were plus or minus four PSI. So the internals of this, they're, they're working off you know, uh, it's, it's poured on tube, so it's a little tube and you, as it inflates, it actually stretches moving a gear, moving the needle. Well, it depends on atmospheric pressure. External has an effect internal. So what this does is events, it allows it to equalize with atmospheric pressure. So whether you're at sea level and then you go up to, you know, 10,000 feet or wherever you're at, you can vent. So it's either gonna let pressure in or let it out, depending uh, you know where you're at and as well as heat if this gets hot it's going to generate higher pressures you want to equalize it so white analog versus digital i think the last thing we need in our life is another battery that we have to maintain and watch for and because every time i went to use my digital gauge it was it seemed like it was dead half the time the other thing is it's a lot easier to read a uh, analog gauge as you're deflating because digital you know it's flipping through numbers you got to watch it pretty closely uh, where an analog you can kind of do it at a glance you can see how fast it's moving where you want to stop and everything so it's kind of like on cars, you know, uh, a lot of times they try doing the digital gauge, but it's hard to read, so they're analog. The other thing is it's liquid filled, and this is good to very low temperature, so that, that won't be a concern. And the reason is, because this is mounted in a vehicle, it's vibrating, it's moving, the fluid helps prevent internal wear. As well, it also makes for smoother movements when you're deflating or inflating. Other things, you know, hard anodized aluminum, banging it around, hitting it against things, it's much more durable. Stainless steel case. You might be wondering here, what is all this for? Well, in the future, we're gonna have mounts so that it can mount and click into position and those will be coming shortly as well. So those are the features and why we did it.